I'm going to begin with a review of some number theory topics that I'll be using to solve this problem. Let's briefly review the Euler totient function. This is the number of values x such that x is between 1 and n, and the GCD of x and n is 1, so they don't share any primes in common. We usually abbreviate this as phi of n, and if n has some prime factorization with these a primes, then our formula for phi of n is n multiplied by all of these factors. Specifically for our problem, we'll be using phi of p squared, so we're looking for numbers between 1 and p squared that are relatively prime to p squared. If we look at all the numbers between 1 and p squared, as we list our numbers, we encounter the prime and all the multiples of that prime until we get to p squared. Everything else in this list of consecutive integers from 1 to p squared is co-prime to p squared. So we need to remove all of these multiples of p. There are p multiples of p in this list, so we're going to take our p squared numbers and subtract these p multiples of p, and what remain are the numbers that are co-prime to p squared. The next thing we're going to use is Euler's theorem, which has that a to the power of the totient function phi of n is equivalent to 1 in mod n. I'm not going to give a proof here, but I'll provide a link to one in the video description. So for now, let's note that phi of n is not necessarily the smallest exponent that satisfies this relationship. In fact, let's let some number d be the smallest solution that satisfies a to the power of d is equivalent to 1 in mod n. In number theory, this value d, we call it the order of a in mod n using this notation. There is a theorem that proves if we have some number m such that a to the m is equivalent to 1 in mod n, and d is the order of a in mod m, then d divides m. I'm not going to prove this relationship, but I'll provide a link to the proof in the video description. I find it easier to remember the converse because it's easier to picture. If we have a to the d is equivalent to 1 in mod n, then if we have some m that's greater than or equal to d, and m is a multiple of d, then if we take a to the power of m and do our substitution and use our rule for powers, since d is the order of a in mod n, we can replace this with 1, and we see that multiples of d are also going to be equivalent to 1 in mod n. Let's return now to the problem. First, we're going to find the smallest p that satisfies n to the fourth plus 1. This is divisible by p squared, so we'll say it's 0 in mod p squared. We'll subtract 1 from both sides, and then we'll square both sides. Now let's check to see if 8 is the order of n mod p squared. We can do this by quickly evaluating other powers of n and looking for contradictions. For example, if n squared is equivalent to 1, then we have that n fourth is also equivalent to 1, which contradicts the problem statement. We'll try n to the third power. This gives us n is equivalent to 1. Raising this to the fourth power, we get n to the fourth is equivalent to 1, also a contradiction. n to the fourth is equivalent to negative 1, so 4 is not the order. We'll try an order of 5. If this is true, we can write n to the fifth as n to the fourth times n. Again, according to the problem statement, we have that n to the fourth is negative 1. This would make n equivalent to negative 1. Raising to the fourth power, we have n to the fourth is equivalent to 1. And another contradiction. We'll try an order of 6. In this case, we have either n cubed is 1 or it's negative 1. We've already evaluated that n cubed cannot be equal to 1. So here's a contradiction. If this is true, then n is equivalent to negative 1 and then raised to the fourth power again, we get our contradiction. Trying an order of 7, we can write this as n to the fourth and n cubed. So they're either both 1 or they're both negative 1. Here's our contradiction with the problem statement. Here again, if this is true, n is equivalent to negative 1, and n to the fourth is 1 another contradiction. So evaluating all of these smaller exponents gives us that, in fact, 8 is the order of n in p squared. Therefore, any other exponent, say m, such that n to the m is equivalent to 1 mod p squared, then 8 is going to divide m. Among all of these other multiples of 8, we know that by Euler's theorem, n to the power 
of the totient function of p squared is going to be equivalent to 1, which means that 8 is going to divide this quantity. And earlier we found that this was p times p minus 1. If 8 divides p times p minus 1, then this expression is 0 in mod 8. One solution is p is equal to 0, which makes this a multiple of 8, but p is prime, so that's not a valid solution. And we'll try various values of p minus 1 to see what's a multiple of 8. We could try p equals 9, but that's not prime. The next multiple of 8 plus 1 is 17, and this is our prime number. And we'll be using this for the second part of our solution. So now we're going to find the least value of m such that m to the fourth plus 1 is 0 in mod 17 squared. This is equivalent to saying 17 squared divides m to the fourth plus 1 is find all the solutions to this more relaxed equation and then check them in mod 17 squared for the problem statement. So we'll rewrite this as m to the 4 is negative 1 in mod 17. Minus 1 is 16 in mod 17. So our solutions for m squared is 4 or negative 4. Negative 4 in mod 17 is 13. Drilling down here, we get that m is equivalent to 2 or negative 2 in mod 17. Let's rewrite this algebraically. This is 13 more than a multiple of 17. We'll try various values of k that result in a perfect square. And we get one when k is equal to 3. So m squared is 64, which means m is plus or minus 8. Minus 8 is equivalent to 9 in mod 17. So our solutions for m to the fourth plus 1 is 0 in mod 17 are 2, negative 2, 8, and 9. We'll try each of these values of m that satisfy m to the fourth plus 1 is 0 in mod 17 squared, and then find the smallest value of m. We'll start with m is 2 and rewrite this algebraically as 2 more than a multiple of 17. We want this to satisfy m to the fourth plus 1 is a multiple of 17 squared. So we'll substitute and we'll expand our binomial. We're interested in taking this expression in mod 17 and we notice that these first three terms are all multiples of 17 squared. So they are all equivalent to 0. So we'll evaluate these last three terms. This one is 4 times 17 times k times 8, and then we have 16 and 1. We're trying to find a value of k that satisfies this equivalence. I'm going to factor out 17 from both of these, and we're left with 32k plus 1. This expression on the left divides the square of 17. We get 117 here, so we need to find another 17 in the second part of this product. This is also going to be a multiple of 17. 32 is 2 less than 34, so I'll replace this with minus 2 in mod 17. We're looking for a small number that's 1 more than a multiple of 17. This gives us k is 9. Let's solve for m, which again was 17k plus 2. And this is our first value for m. Now let's try m is negative 2 in mod 17. Again, we'll rewrite this algebraically as 17k minus 2. Substitute this in to our equivalence. We'll expand our binomial again, but similar to the first part of the solution, we can ignore the first three terms of this expansion because they're all going to be 0 in mod 17 squared. So we'll just look at the last two terms. This evaluates to negative 8 times 17k, and then again we have 16 plus 1. We'll factor out the 17 again. This evaluates to negative 32 times 17k, and then we have 16 plus 1. And we'll factor out 17 again. We get one of our 17s from this factor, so we have to have another multiple of 17 from our second factor. We'll replace this term with 2 times k, and our solution here is k equals 8. M was 2 less than a multiple of 17, where k was equal to 8. This gives us our next solution for m, 134. Now we'll try our next value of m, which was 8 in mod 17. We'll rewrite it algebraically, and we'll substitute here. 
We'll expand this again, skipping the first three terms. And 17 squared is 289. We have some pretty high powers of 2. This is 2 to the 11th times 17k and 2 to the 12th. To make this easier, let's find a power of 2 that's close to 289. 2 to the 8th is 256. This is 33 less than 289. So I can replace 8 of these 2s with negative 33. And I have an 8 here. Replacing 8 of these 2s with negative 33. I've got 4 more 2s, so 16. 8 times negative 33 is negative 264. This is 25 in mod 289. And then over here, with 16 times negative 33, that's 2 times the above quantity 25 or 50 in mod 289. So we'll make that substitution. 51 is a multiple of 17, so I'll factor out the 17. This factor is going to be a multiple of 17. We'll replace 25 with 8 in mod 17, and we'll try different values of k. 11 is negative 6 in mod 17. We'll add another 8 to that. That gives us 2. Adding 8 to 2, we get 10, which is negative 7 in mod 17. Adding another 8, we get 1. Adding another 8, we get 9. Adding 8 here, we get 17. So k equals 6 is our smallest solution. In this case, m is 17k plus 8. This gives us our third value of m, or 110. Our last case for m is 9 in mod 17, so we'll try that one. 9 is the same thing as negative 8 in mod 17, so we'll rewrite this algebraically as 17k minus 8. And substitute again, and we'll expand as usual. And we'll use our earlier equivalents for 2 to the 8th power. So I'll write these all in terms of 2 to the 8th. And then this is negative 25 again, and this is 50. And we'll factor out these multiples of 17. The second factor is a multiple of 17. We'll replace this with minus 8, and replace this with 9k plus 3, and try different values of k. So when k is 1, this is 12, which is negative 5 in mod 17. We'll add another 9 for k equals 2. This gives us 4. Adding another 9 gives us 13, or minus 4. Here we get 5. Here we get 14, which is minus 3. 15 is minus 2. 16 is minus 1. And when k is 11, we get a multiple of 17. Here m is 17k minus 8, which is 179. That's our fourth value of m. We want to find the least value of m, which is 110. If you'd like me to solve any other math contest problems, please leave them in the comments.